Hi everybody, this is Kevin Purcell from Notebooks.com and GotToBeMobile.com and um, we wanted to show you this, the Nook Color. Now, um, our, our editor of Notebooks.com, Josh Smith, already showed you the Nook Color. He did an unboxing of it and kind of talked a little bit about it. And we don't want to spend a whole lot of time just talking about the Nook Color, the hardware of it. I'll put a link to that article so you can see a little bit more about the base configuration. But if you're familiar with the Nook Color, you'll notice that when you look at this one, it looks a little bit different. Now, you hit that button right there and you see the regular Nook Color uh, toolbar. You hit the uh, library button and it goes into the library of your books. We haven't put a whole lot of books on this one yet. It's fairly new still. But uh, when you hit the home key on the Nook Color, and I'm trying to do this uh, a little bit left-handed. I've got a, a bad thumb today. Um, you notice I have this toolbar and there's a whole bunch of small icons across there and uh, that is a special add-on that I've done. What I've done is I have, uh, just to test this out, I wanted to see what it was like to root the Nook Color. And so that's what I've done. There's a, a number of different ways you can do this and I'll put a link in the uh, article that contains this uh, video for some instructions from the XDA Developers Forum that talks about rooting the Nook Color. Uh, the simplest way is you get yourself one of these uh, little micro SD cards. Uh, here's the enclosure that comes in. And um, you go ahead and put a version of Honeycomb on it. Honeycomb is uh, Android 3.0. There you would go. And you put it in the slot, which strangely enough, is in a very awkward location, right back there, and you put it in there and it'll boot up just like a live CD would, where you don't actually install anything, you don't make any permanent changes, and so if you want to test this out, that's really the best way to do it. My experience though is the honeycomb for the Nook is sort of half-baked. Uh, I'm looking forward in about a month or so, I'm sure it'll be a lot better, and I'll probably uh, switch to that permanently, but it's very nice, it's got uh, this is uh, Android 2.2, I believe, and I've added a few different things. So I've got like a little notifier down here. tells me I've got a couple of unread messages. You hit this button, and it automatically goes back to the last book that you've been reading, which is a, a book that my wife has been reading called Heaven is for Real. And uh, if you're interested in that book, she loves it. And, of course, it's got Gmail, and there's the Dolphin browser, and my favorite uh, Android Bible program is Olive Tree. I'm looking forward to a couple other ones getting ready to come out from Laridian and Logos. Um, but notice over here, you also have access to the Android Marketplace. Now, I had to hack this one on there. There's a version that comes in uh, the rooting software that's older, and I had to download this new version of the Marketplace and put it on here. But let me show you that it does rotate. It kind of works better in that mode most of the time. As far as tablets go, it's pretty nice. Uh, it does a good job of uh, being a tablet. You can browse the web, check your email, get on uh, Twitter, Facebook, those kinds of things. does a really nice job at all of that. Um, you know, I haven't done a whole lot other than install a few apps and check them out. But uh, probably the greatest thing about this, though, is with the Nook Color, you can read not only Nook books, but also you can read books from your Android or from your the Android version of the Amazon store. And that's the real benefit of this. That's what I really wanted it for was to have a dual book reader that I could read books on the Nook and using Amazon. Now notice it takes a little while to get it started up, but there's a book that I'm reading for a professional development uh, um, group that I'm involved in, and uh, so it's just really nice. Now any other books that you might be interested in looking at, if you want it on the Nook software, you can get it there. You just hit there, go into shop, and it'll help you find books that are on Nook. Nook has a the Barnes & Noble Nook Bookstore has tons of books um, and magazines. And then if you're not interested in that anymore, you can go in here to Amazon. That's great. Or you can just open 
you know, PDFs and that sort of thing. It has the basic browser. Now there's a little problem in here, and what I've tried to do is uh, I've got, tried to get rid of some of these icons that I don't use. I'm just not going to use the, the Google Talk. It doesn't have the ability to, I don't think there's even a built-in microphone. It doesn't have the ability to use Google Talk, uh, or there's no camera, so there's you know not going to do any uh, Skype or anything on it. Um, I don't put any music on mine. I use my iPhone for that. But uh, it's there if you want to. It just works really well. The best browser I've found is the Dolphin browser, uh, which is uh, just a really nice browser. has some ability to put some add-ons and that kind of thing. But you hit here, and this shows you all of your apps that you have installed. And so I've already put quite a few on here. Normally you'd only have about, I think there's a dozen or so apps. I think you get, um, as I look at it here, I'm trying to remember what came with it. You get the browser, and you get the calendar and chess. Uh, maybe the calculator, you get contacts, a crossword puzzle app, um, I think the email app is on there, uh, Lend Me, which allows you to lend Nook uh, Barnes & Noble books, the music app, the library app, of course, is on there, I think Pandora might be on it, and here's your settings, and then there's the shop, and a little Sudoku, if you like to play Sudoku, it's on there as well. But that's it, so the rest of those are apps that I have added uh, to it after rooting it. Now let me go ahead and show you what it looks like when you boot it up in Honeycomb. Uh, if you want to do this, first you need to shut it down. And you do that simply by holding down the power button. Now I'll do it so you can see the screen to see what it does. But you hold down the power button. Notice it kind of goes fainter and then it brings up this. And you hit power off and it will shut down. As I'm doing this, you can see the flicker on the screen. It doesn't have quite as high a refresh rate as the iPad does, and so you get a little bit of that flicker. And now what you'll have to do is actually turn it over, pop open that little door, and the micro SD card is in there. You push it in to get it to pop out, and I find it's sort of difficult to get that out, so I always just lay it on a table like this and let it slide in through this little hole. This kind of handle there. I don't know. That's just sort of awkward. I wish that they hadn't done it like that. Alright, so now we'll take the other card. It's not blazing fast, but it's really not that slow either. It's uh, fairly decent. What you're going to want to use is when you use your micro SD card for this, I got a 4 gigabyte one at first just to install using a program called Auto Neuter. But what you're going to really want if you're going to run Android on your card is you're going to want something bigger than that. So I would get an 8 gigabyte and make sure you get a really good one. Uh, first I got these PNY cards and they're decent but they're just not fast enough. It really kind of chugged along pretty slowly and uh, so I got a different one. You want a class 6 or higher card for this. Now you'll notice it's booting up in tablet mode in this landscape mode. It comes on and that's just the unlock screen. All right, now you notice again there's that flicker and that comes from the fact that uh, the screen doesn't have as high a refresh rate. It's harder to see on camera. When you're looking at it live, not through a camera like this, it actually is very good. It's a dark screen so there's a bit of a glare here so you're seeing some reflection. I haven't added much of anything to this. I haven't even gotten uh, the the marketplace on here yet. But uh, you can see it's a fairly nice interface. And even running off that card, it uh, moves moderately quickly. It's not blazing fast, but uh, it's usable. The problem, as I said before, is Honeycomb for the Nook has not yet been fully baked. It's just not quite there. Um, I still have not gotten used to Honeycomb yet. I was using uh, Android 2.2 for about uh, two weeks before I did this, or about a week, I guess, really. But you got all your apps. I haven't loaded the uh, Amazon app or anything like that, but I do like the Honeycomb interface a lot better. And if I had put in, if I had put some uh, icons on the desktop. And that sort of thing, you'd see things more than just these screens going back and forth. That takes you back to your apps. There you can add stuff. Anyway, 
Um, you know, these are the different things you can add. Some of you who probably know more about honeycomb than I do understand what's going on here better than I do. But I just wanted to show that to you. And it works really well considering it's not fully ready. It feels more like a very early, early beta running on the Nook. Uh, they just got this thing working on the Nook at the beginning of February. And I'm sure they're working hard to update it and make it stronger. But uh, for now, I'm sticking with uh, the auto neuter, which handles... The difference is one of them installs it on the internal storage, whereas this one just boots from the card. Now, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. And so when I give you the links to the XDA developers forum, you'll, uh, you'll see all that. But I just wanted to show it to you. I think that uh, the Nook Color makes a really nice tablet at only $200. If you get it right now, I'm not sure how long this will last, but there's a link over at gottobemobile.com that if you get it through their uh, official eBay channel, it'll only be $200. It's $50 off. That's an incredible price for a, a nice, decent tablet. You'll have to do your own work. Uh, once you do this, we have to tell you it is probably going to void your warranty. Um, there are probably ways of getting around that, you know, but... Uh, uh, it is a, a nice little uh, tablet for what it does. My, I think the biggest thing, the biggest benefit of it, and the reason I'm staying with Android 2.2 is it's more stable. And what I just really wanted is I wanted to be able to read Amazon and Nook books and have a browser and uh, do a little bit of email. And that's it. That's all I really wanted from this. And I, at that, that's all it. If that's all you do with it, this is a great tablet. I don't understand why anyone would pay $500 for. Uh, something more, or $800 for a Zoom, uh, if that's all you wanted to do. Now, if you want a more of a tablet, a, a more iPad-like experience, then this isn't going to be your choice. You don't, you're not going to want this. You're going to be disappointed in it. Um, but at the price, it's an excellent value. So this has been Kevin Purcell for uh, Notebooks.com and GottaBeMobile.com. Thank you for watching.